Market here today. Today we're working on this 1995 uh, Chrysler Cirrus with the um, Sebring engine, which comes in uh, Sebring, Stratus, Breeze, and this. Some of the, the upper scale Breeze, excuse me, LXI Breeze. Um, Breeze is usually the 2.4, which comes in the Neon. This also comes Sebring, Stratus, this car, and the LXI. Um, this is a base model here. So essentially what I've got is a no spark condition on this car. So first things we're going to check, we're going to turn the key on real quick. And the first things that we're always going to want to check is to make sure that you have current to this fuse here. Okay, see we got current on both sides of the fuse. Basic stuff, always check to start with the easiest stuff, always the easiest. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at the fuse box cover for those of you who don't have a fuse box cover in your car. I'm not sure you can see that real well, but that'll give you a general idea because you can always freeze the picture. There you go. Okay, then now that we know we have current to these two fuses, that means that the auto shutdown relay work is working. Okay, so we have current here and here on both these two fuses. So both of those are for the auto shutdown relay. Now for those of you who don't know where the auto shutdown relay is, is this relay here. Okay, you should have current on this terminal here and I believe on this one down or this one over here. So these two terminals should be hot, should have ground in the center. And essentially what that does is it collapses the field inside the relay in order to complete the circuit to run the fuel pump. If you have an LXI model or upper scale model, this is part of the security system. Um, if you have a red dot on your dash when you turn the key on, there'll be like a little tiny red dot. Um, that is, that means you have security equipped uh, vehicle. Sometimes your fob is missing and the key will need reprogrammed, the car will not start. So essentially what this car is, is I have a no spark condition. So what we're gonna do is, already, as you can well see down here, I'm not sure how well you can see, but the distributor is hidden quite nicely way in the hill down there, way back there. I need the throttle plate. See the, the numbers on the cap? Okay. So inside there, you have a coil, a pickup unit. Uh, essentially, what we're verifying now is that we have current to this plug. This is your 12 volt supply. Hang on just a second, folks. Set you down for just a second. I'll hook up this test light and make sure that there's only one wire to this. So we're gonna take our test light, make sure that the, the probe doesn't touch anything on, on the body that's metal, otherwise it will short the ECM. So we're gonna go in here real quick and we're gonna verify that. Hang on, so I gotta turn some of the position where you can see it. God bless it. Okay, hang on a second, this thing's being finicky now. Now that I wanna do a video, that's how it always goes. Uh, hang on a second, folks. Okay, so we need to, because you're doing this with one person, you're gonna wanna have it set up in such a position where you can see the test light, which is what I'm trying to do here, but this thing's being really, really difficult suddenly. Okay, so there's a camera over here. You can see the test light. So when you go to turn the key on, there should be nothing. Okay, so we have current now. That means we have voltage to the distributor, okay? So essentially what this car has is a bad distributor. In order to replace the distributor in this car, you're gonna take these two eight millimeter bolts out of the EGR pipe. There's, you see these ones already have out. These two pipes here, these two bolts here, this pipe needs to come out. You're gonna to wanna to take the brake master loose, which is the bolt down here, one there, and just pull it over to the side, remove the, the cruise control module, and this should give you fairly easy access. This is a one drop distributor. It's not real complicated. You can't, it's pretty much foolproof. You have two Phillips screws at the top, one here, one at the bottom. Okay, which the whole cap will come off. Um, the wires are all numbered. Uh, if you have a factory car, the wires should have numbers on them. See, like this one says number two. So they're all numbered, um, unless somebody's changed them out. Good idea is take and mark them all first. In order to get to the back wires, if you're gonna do a tune-up at the same time, you'll need to pull the intake plenum in order to access those. Um, this job should take you about an hour and a half to two hours. The distributor, unfortunately, is very pricey um, because it's, um, it has a pickup, it has a position sensor, and then uh, it has a coil built into it as well. So this is about $239 at your local parts house. I don't recommend using a used one because you could end up with the same problem and end up doing it two or three times. Um, so essentially, you know, that's a, a quick troubleshoot for you on this particular model. Um, sometimes uh, the ground wire will break. Um, always check your ECM connections. As you see, this car here I picked up for $200. And it's got a little bit of drama where somebody's gotten in here, maybe pulled on some stuff and see like this wire down here. So it's broken right at the base where it goes in. Those, that can be a problem there. And sometimes the wires will break inside the insulation. So like this one's got a kink in it. I just wanna watch for stuff like that because that can mean the wire could be, could be broken inside the insulation. Um, also a common problem on these cars, as you see somebody's done here, is they've had a problem with the uh, oxygen sensors. So what they did was they took it spliced into the original wiring and eliminated that wire from the harness 
and ran their own, which is really tacky and corny, but as you see, they, what they did there in order to make the oxygen sensor work. Um, that'll also set a check engine light, which will constantly say you need oxygen sensors. You'll put in five or six, and it'll keep saying the same thing. Um, oftentimes, this is a common fix in order to do this. Um, fortunately, somebody's already done this for me, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's the uh, 25 V6 uh, Chrysler Sebring Stratus Breeze um, Cirrus. And um, this model here, which is, this is a base um, Cirrus. It's not an LX or uh, EX or ES, excuse me. Um, it does have all the power features and all that. It's a pretty decent rig uh, for $200. I couldn't go wrong. So there's Lynn Gentlemen. I hope that helps out. And um, if you have questions, feel free to hit me up um, at my email, which is um, homewrecker71986 at gmail. All right, you guys take care.